if someone were to measure, I presume meditation has the highest dropout rate. All of us know meditation helps. Many of us even try it out. But most of us feel we are not cut out to meditate and stop after a few attempts. It's not because of the lack of intent or effort, but the lack of understanding about what meditation truly is. With so many myths about meditation, a lot of us who need it most shy away from the practice. If that's you too, then this one is for you. Hello and welcome back to the Own Your Everyday series of the Being Miraculous podcast. I'm your host and self-awareness coach Shweta Shivraman, back with some weekly insights and perspectives to help you own your everyday. So, truths first, right? If you had asked me about meditation a few years ago, I'd have laughed and said, why bother? But three years of meditating almost every single day changed my entire worldview. Born and raised in a family that has had exposure to yoga and meditation for many years, I feel like a fool today for not tapping into the power of meditation earlier. But hey, better late than never. And if you've been on and off with meditation too, I hope this episode serves as your wake-up call to get back and stay on. What is meditation really? Think about it. What image comes to your mind when I say the word meditation? A monk or a saint sitting oh so seriously with intense concentration and pressure between the eyebrows? Or maybe something even more intense? Is that person standing on one leg? A lot of us wrongly assume meditation to be an act of concentration. And so we sit down to meditate. We try and we try and we try and concentrate. Don't think about anything else. Don't think about anything else. Concentrate, you fool. Don't think about anything else. And what happens within a few seconds? We are sitting there thinking about everything else. From David's sarcasm in the latest Shits Creek episode to the horrible email your boss sent you to what you're having for lunch today and how it's still raining in Bombay and your mind tries to remember everything and anything. Eventually, when this happens enough number of times, we get up and give up. We say meditation is not for me. It doesn't work for me. I cannot concentrate. And in all of these lies the biggest myth about meditation. You do not have to concentrate to meditate. You simply have to pay attention. When we concentrate, we exclude. Think about it. When you keep saying concentrate on your breath, concentrate on your breath, you are trying to exclude everything but the fact that you are breathing. But we don't work like that. Our minds don't function like that. Our nature, our very nature is all-inclusive. And the path to meditation has to be all-inclusive too. When you pay attention, you include everything. A thought comes up and you acknowledge its presence. An itch comes up, you acknowledge its presence. A scent comes up and reminds you of the summers in Europe, you acknowledge its presence. You don't force something to come up. And neither do you resist anything that comes up. You simply pay attention. The one thing you need to stop doing to meditate effortlessly is stop trying to stop thinking. It is a futile effort. The only way we are ever going to have no thoughts is when we are dead. Until then, there will always be fluctuations and activity in the mind. When meditating, if you're continuously telling yourself, stop thinking, that itself is another thought and you're going to go down a vicious spiral. Like Osho says, the very effort to stop will create more anxiety. It will create conflict. It will make you split. You will be in constant turmoil within and that is not going to help. What you need to do is let go. Instead of riding the wave with every thought, Simply sit by the shore and watch. Don't be the fool trying to stop the waves. Allow it to go back the same way it cropped up. No need to do any action. Give the thoughts complete freedom. Let them churn as fast or as slow as they want. By being a mere witness, you will stop fueling these thoughts and they will eventually slow down. Like Eckhart Tolle says, whatever you fight, you strengthen. And what you resist persists. So don't fight the thoughts. Instead, let them pass. Gradually, they'll trickle down to a few weak voices far apart 
and there will be a space that emerges between these thoughts. And in that quiet, you find what you are looking for in meditation. You don't have to do anything. Just be a witness to all that's happening within. And this continued attention will also improve your concentration eventually. Concentration is an outcome of meditation, not an input. And on that note, here's your own everyday tip this week. Meditation is for everyone seeking peace and quiet within and do not believe the myth that you have to stop thinking to be successful at meditation. Keep paying attention and keep practicing. Meditation works in a myriad tangible and intangible ways and you will see the difference soon enough. If you're looking for more ways to be engaged in life and lead peaceful, balanced and successful lives, read my latest ebook on the 11 fundamental truths to living a good life. The ebook is a synthesis of many of my learnings to date with a practical approach on how to implement and integrate in our daily lives. Download it for free from the links across our socials and if you find value, contribute any sum you feel is right to help me fund this labor of love I pursue at the Being Miraculous. I invest several hours and rupees to make this content valuable and useful to the audience and any support will take us a long way. Until we meet again, this is Shweta signing off, hoping you have a fabulous week ahead.